Cool, so yeah, hi. Uh, I'm Jen and this is Steph. We'll get into that a little bit more, but can you hear me just with my voice? Yes. Yeah? Okay. Oh, cool. Um, awesome. Well, we are going to talk today, uh, it's, it's really going to be a facilitated conversation as you'll see as we get in a little bit further, but uh, about gender equity in tech in our Omaha tech community, um, basically talking about where we are, uh, where you think we are, where you think we can go, um, and just some, some work that we've been doing kind of along that path. So. I'm Stephanie, <laughs> here. This is Jen. Hey, that's me. Here. <laughs> uh, yeah, we so did stand on the right side. Jen and I were uh, among the group of co-founders for the Gender Equity in Tech Conference Get Comp last year. I am a digital marketing manager at the Arboring Foundation and also um, an entrepreneur and consultant. Yes, and I'm a software engineer at Flywheel. And we also had a couple of other key organizers that we would definitely want to uh, take a minute to recognize. Wendy Holly, who also has been supporting uh, this track all day long. Uh, she was one of our key organizers last year, uh, basically everything from balancing the budget to working with vendors to just everything. Uh, and Casey did uh, a lot of our design and our assets, put together our website and things like that. Um, Wendy is also on our organizing team for 2020. We wanted to um, start off with covering a couple of uh, definitions, uh, at least how we see these definitions. Uh, first of gender, and then we'll talk about equity a little bit, just to kind of frame the conversation that we're gonna have today. We are by no means experts, um, but this is kind of how we are looking at it as we're having these conversations. And again, we want to kind of set the framework for today. Wanna to talk about gender? Okay, so we have our um, definition here, gender, individual, and cultural understandings of behaviors, roles, feelings, and activities. Unlike sex or sex categories, biological factors do not determine gender. However, our current sex gender system links sex to gender through naturalization and enforcement of gender conventions and norms. So know that this is kind of the lens that we approach gender as we move into um, our get on. And then a second key term we wanted to make sure we covered uh, was equity. I think that's something that a lot of times if you're not in a lot of those conversations, maybe uh, in communities that you're in, uh, that can get a little bit confusing. So we wanted to make sure we covered that. And we pulled this from uh, the Stanford Social Innovation Review and also some terminology that we use with our uh, diversity and inclusion consultant from GetConf. But what, how we view it is uh, equity or social equity is about each of us getting what we need to survive or succeed based on where we are and where we want to go. Um, this can include access to opportunity, networks, resources. Uh, it can take into account facts like historical context, systemic oppression, biases, privileges. Um, and so if you hear us talking about equity, social equity, uh, it is, <laughs> uh, th that's what we mean. It's basically the things that we need to put into place um, or things that can be put into place to uh, uh, get people what they need to survive or succeed. Um, and just one note when we talk about equity, this is different than equality. So I think perhaps equality is a term that you're more familiar with. And we think about equality, we think about giving everybody the same thing and assuming that if you get the same thing, the same resources, then you can expect the same outcomes. Equity acknowledges that that just isn't true. So um, another way to think about uh, kind of diversity, inclusion, and equity in this context is diversity is you know inviting various folks to the table. Inclusion is including them in the meal, offering them something to eat. But equity is like all of the other things to meet our individual dietary restrictions um, or other things that, that might matter to make us really be able to participate fully. Maybe. There you go. Cool, so for those of you who aren't aware, uh, like we said, we put on a conference earlier this year uh, called Gender Equity in Tech Conference, or GetConf for short. And this was kind of what we set out as um, kind of the goal of the day. It was a one-day conference where we wanted to amplify and celebrate the voices of women and gender expansive individuals in tech. Uh, it, it was in April, gosh, I already forgot the date. It was in late April, April 26th. Um, and we wanna kind of highlight some of the things that we were able to do that day and some of the priorities. Uh, that we had for why we did things the way that we did. Uh, yeah, just hit spacebar. Cool. 
So we had 18 speakers who were all who all identified as women or gender expansive people, uh, and they spoke on a number of things. So we have Katie here from NPR. She she gave a workshop on research meeting reality. Grishma talked about uh, natural language processing. She also gave a workshop. Um, Stephanie was our panel moderator. Uh, and we just had a lot of really great conversations throughout the day and we were able to amplify those voices and get people thinking about um, some topics at least in that area. And one of the priorities that we also had with our speakers was we wanted to compensate them for their time and for their effort. And so a lot of conferences are starting to do this, but it's still kind of new. Even our speakers who were going to five different conferences said that we were the only conference that paid them. So we paid our keynote speakers $500. We paid our, uh, our speakers and our workshop providers $200. And then we paid our panelists $100. Um, it doesn't make up for all of the time that they spent putting their work together, but we thought that it was something that we could at least do to uh, basically compensate them for the time that they are doing, the labor they are doing for us. And we also provided out of town folks up to $500 in airfare and or travel and uh, two nights of free lodging if they needed it. Uh, so this was really important to us because oftentimes we see people from underrepresented groups being asked to speak, but like through volunteering their time. Um, and so like the reality is for us, like it was extra important for this group that was 100% underrepresented folks in tech to understand that like what they're bringing to the table is valuable, valuable enough that we were intent on paying them from the beginning, kind of like no matter what. So. Maybe. There we go. Some other things that we wanted to consider in this experience. Accessibility. So um, both by making our ticket prices accessible, I think $100 was a full price ticket. $99, $99 yeah, okay. I think. Uh, and we had different <coughs> scholarship opportunities available. We had discounts um, available. We really didn't want to have the price be something that kept folks out of there. But then equally, we chose a venue that was accessible by bus lines. Um, so that we could ensure that folks could get there. We also um, offered childcare. We didn't end up having any takers for that uh, this first year. But safety, like our code of conduct, um, accessibility, even in like the venue space. So we had like zero step entryways. Um, as much as we could do to just try to consider what would need to be done to make everybody feel welcome and to make this event something that was accessible and within reach for them. Um, yeah, we also work with a ton of women owned vendors as, as much as we could. Cool. So that's just a quick shot that we took at the beginning of the day. We, ha uh, we actually oversold the event, which was really exciting. It shows that there's interest and a hunger for this topic. Um, we ended up having 250 people, um, and there were some things that we did really well. One of the things that I think that we set out to do that we did do very well was we did amplify those voices of people that you're not necessarily hearing at some of these conferences uh, on topics that you're not necessarily hearing about at conferences that you might go to. Um, but we also had some areas that we've identified both from feedback from our attendees. We sent out a, a, a survey afterwards and also from kind of our reflection afterwards. And one of the areas that we think that we uh, could do better in and we intended to do better in, but you know, we got busy, we were volunteers, uh, was uh, doing intentional work to build community uh, within this, this group of people in our community and beyond. Uh, we had some activities that we had planned and we had some technical difficulties that if you were there, we got through them, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, it meant that we had to scrap some of the things that we were gonna do in terms of some more community building and mentorship opportunities and, and those sorts of uh, maybe deeper, longer lasting conversations. So we, uh, I guess maybe kind of an announcement, we are not putting on a one day conference this year, but GetConf is continuing into 2020 and I will let our chair for the year talk about that. Yes, so um, besides in intentionally building community, Resources is yeah. kind of a big thing where we identified an opportunity to provide more. So we had folks saying like, okay, but like, how can I bring this back to my organization? And like, what are the steps that I can take, even as an individual, to help um, advocate for and champion for gender equity and be kind of part of the solution? So as we were planning for our 2020 event, we thought, you know what? Okay. There is definitely room for a Monday conference, which is awesome, but there's also room for um, a more regular cadence of events where we can work on providing those resources to our community and also providing more opportunities connect, to connect both like in person and online. 
So for 2020, we're kicking off a series of quarterly events that are much more resource focused and that will at times provide just like a more intimate opportunity to have these smaller but very important discussions, but then also providing like opportunities for like online engagement. Um, we're looking at a um, like a virtual conference essentially. So in addition to what we think will be kind of a continuation of our one day conference series, but looking at how we can segment our tracks to not just provide those like technology resources and those interesting perspectives from people in underrepresented groups working in the field, but also like tangible resources, both for individuals and for organizations. So that brings us back to a slide that might look familiar, back to the beginning. This is why we're having this conversation, or what we're going to spend the rest of our time with is going to be a conversation where we just kind of have some questions. Uh, we have some ideas about what these uh, events might look like and what the topics might include, but we also wanted to talk to the community since we have a good number of you here uh, to get your feedback, your thoughts on how things are going, uh, things that you see in your individual workplaces or in parts of the community that we might not be connected to as well. Uh, so we would like to kick that off with um, if there's anything and if you feel comfortable sharing publicly that would be wonderful. I don't have it on this slide, I'm sorry, but I will on other slides. Uh, we have email that we can check if you want to share something privately and not put your name on something. Also you can, uh, our, our DMs are open at GetConfOmaha on Twitter. Um, but we wanted to kick it off first with what kinds of things do you think that the community is like doing right? Like what are the things that we are nailing or um, that we are kind of on an upward trend with? Yeah, um, we're happy to share this microphone yeah. with anybody who would like to amplify their voice in this moment. Um, so, I mean, any thoughts on what is going well in our tech community, specifically kind of what we are talking about right now, and, you know, as it relates to building an inclusive environment? Uh, and also the Do Space Fellows, uh, the fellowship program, I think, for women innovators is, is another program. Any other like programs or things that you have seen or heard of that are going Oh, you go girl. Okay, you go you girl. Go girl. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So here's where I have the, the, the email and the, the Twitter handle. And outside of this space, too, please feel free to reach out if you have any thoughts or opinions. Oh, right, the mic. Um, but so we also wanted to talk about just like what brought you here today? Like what made you come to this talk today? And like what is it that you want to see changed or uh, what concerns do you have about the things that you see? Um, I know that the reason why we put together GetConf was similar to what, not the reason, but a reason we put together GetConf was it kept coming up how we had been to events in the past. There was a previous event that had 40 men and that was all their speakers. Uh, if some of you remember that. And we've been to events like that, and we were like, you know what? We want to go somewhere where it's 100% women and gender expansive people, and there's no men on the stage, and just see what that even feels like. Um, so those were concerns that we had that led to the action that we took. Does anyone here have any concerns that they see, or, and you don't have to necessarily solution for it now, but. Or even just the question of, so why are you here? Yeah. I mean, is anybody willing to, to like, give us some insight into why you're at the top right now? Well, I think you probably guessed I'm here to support Jen, but uh, I definitely, 
I, I apologize because when you were talking about get comp along the, the planning and getting it all together, I didn't have a clue what it was, and I never really sat to like ask you. I just assumed it had something to do with code, um, <laughs> and I apologize for that because this is super cool, and I would have loved to have been at the event. Um, so I think it's awesome what you guys are doing for the community. Like, you found a neat here. You found something that wasn't there, and reached out and just like started it. So I think this is awesome. Cool. So we're closing the talk now. That's what we came here for. <laughs> Thank you for your compliments. No. <laughs> So um, one of the things uh, for me, I'm not technical. Um, I manage a lot of really technical people. Um, and so that can be really difficult, especially as a woman. Um, so my focus is on bringing them up um, and making sure that they're successful throughout their career growth. So yeah. Awesome. Anybody else want to share? I will note, Wendy, as I pointed out earlier, she's one of our organizers. She's taking notes through all of this. Um, so we are gathering your feedback as well. And this is great. Thank you. And like put it into programming <laughs> so that we can hopefully provide the resources that will resonate and be most valuable to the folks who want to do this work. I think for me, what I want to do is something that I can take back to my job. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so in particular that, just resources that you can bring back to share with your team on an ongoing basis beyond the one-day event. Um, okay, so does anybody want to share you have concerns about gender equity in our local tech community? Is that part of what brought you here? Maybe not. This is like really strange. It's poorly worded. Like as a cis male, right? Like I often feel that there's these when we do these inclusion, it's often very female focused. The male perspective is often part of the issue. So I'm always kind of curious for like what what does this look like? Um, and what does this mean for that? Because I, I often feel like I at times ignorant or movement look like for cis males who want to be a part of this? I guess that's a concern, maybe. But yeah. Nothing based on our Yeah. No, I think that's a question. I, I think that's a question that we have gotten a lot. Um, and it is an interesting line to walk in terms of centering the experiences and the needs of the folks who are um, looking for that community and looking to see people like that. Uh, but also then I mean, when there are people who are in greater uh, uh, have greater privilege. Yes, we definitely want to include that in the conversation and how we can change things structurally. Uh, we have a few more minutes. We're running long. Uh, so the next one we wanted to talk about is like, what does an ideal community look like to you? Like even just picturing the people that you work with or the, um, the events that you go to or even thinking of the digital, like Midwest Dev Chat if you're on that or other Slack channels. What does it look like? Who's at the table? Whose voices are heard versus maybe what they are now. I can, oh, you. Uh, okay, yeah. I'm going to jump in here and synthesize <laughs> okay. uh, what I think I heard in your last comment is it sounds like it's really important to have everybody at the table, right? So like this isn't a conversation that can just happen um, among women or among people at like a certain level in the organization. I think in order for us to really be effective in moving forward and making change, it's, it's got to engage everybody. Um, yeah. I'm just answering our question. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Are we out of time? So, we, I was going to actually say, I, I think one thing is I've been on the tech track all morning, and this is the first female speaker, so I would like to see more female speakers on the tech track in an ideal meeting. Um, so I know we just have a second, so it looks like we've got one side left. Um, I guess really what we would like to hear from you in the last few moments together is like a are there specific types of resources or specific things that like you have in mind as far as like events or, or tools or anything else that would be helpful? Like what would help you bring this back to your organizations? If there's anything that anybody would want to share around what you have in mind. And again, like if you have follow-up thoughts, hello at the 
getcompomaha.com or else our DMs are open at getcompomaha. We would love to receive your continued feedback after this. Um, but just in case anybody has some real life feedback they want to deliver in real time and run the group. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, cool. In closing, thanks. These conversations are hard. We appreciate you even being willing to like show up and like sit down and participate even a little bit. So like we said, please, please reach out to us if you have questions. Otherwise, um, just stay tuned because we are getting ready to roll out our next um, calendar of events for the coming year. We'll also be at the Tech Omaha party. We are actually the, oh wait, lies, kind of. <laughs> we'll be at the Tech Omaha party um, through our nonprofit partner, Mystery Code Society. <laughs> also likely with a little bit more information about GetCom. Yeah, thank you for coming. I know this was a difficult conversation, but we appreciate you. Thank Thanks. You.